What's good? What's good? Give everybody a second to get in here. Um, I got clapped on some fucking shorts this morning in crypto. I should have canceled these fucking limits on ETH. I actually, well, honestly, two things I could see happening. A, I should have canceled the limits. It was this right here. So there was this high we had formed right here. And I wanted to play kind of a turtle soup type entry as far as just playing at the, at the liquidity. And I, I mean, I don't know. This is sometimes the things where I'm just frustrated with crypto, but at the same time, you can't be like that. So it's like, you know, we had this low, um, that was the first target. And then these equal lows, um, that I wanted, basically the narrative I wanted to see for ETH was a push down of these equal lows, rebalance, and then sell side, and then start to get that long-term accumulation and manipulation phase. Um, <clears throat> It's a little different than Bitcoin. That's the only problem with that is Bitcoin's already came down far below its uh, June lows. So that was the idea for the narrative that these equal lows are the draw on liquidity, um, or at least this low, right? So it's funny to see. Um, I had I think it was like we were somewhere in here when I wanted to short. I wanted to see a push up, and I woke up really early this morning, like like uh, abnormally early, like five six a.m. And I almost just wanted to cancel the limit, but I saw that this didn't pip the target. I was like, okay, it's just engineering the sell stops. <laughs> and then it just flew up and took me out. Now, the reason I got taken out already was because I've been I've been testing around and using a different stop strategy when I'm trading fair value gaps. And on indices, it's been working pretty well for me. And what it is, is basically just using the fair value gap candle, the first candle. And then I think I added five uh to it i deleted the position already and then this was the first target and i wanted to take it down farther down to those equal lows now i'm gonna be sad if i should have just kept the high resistance run as the, the stop um to be honest with this move up where we're at in crypto right now i'm probably gonna chill for a little bit just because i'm not gonna burn out we had a really good uh two well it was like 10 days or so two weeks or so so I was looking at the dates. I was like, damn, it's crazy how fast time goes. But had a really good um, little stretch in crypto. So definitely don't want to give all the gains back and get burnt out in this range. Um, just because, to be honest, like looking back on this, um, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's honestly just some crypto price action. I think that it was still going to get, we're going to move down at least into this imbalance. But these equal lows are just like, I'll go back to the daily so you can see them. I mean, it's just like, really? But um Overall, I see a lot of uh, sell stops being engineered, but to be honest with crypto, I would not be surprised to see it just run up. So I'll chill on crypto for now. Um, I'm going to probably go back to uh, focusing on indices. We're in this manipulation phase where um, you know, crypto is, you know, the, the good price action, so to speak, um, kind of came and gone or has came and gone for a little bit, in my opinion. I think the idea of this range you know, like we talked about the possibility of all of this just being an accumulation and then um, maybe a little manipulation phase, maybe go down deeper into that monthly fair value gap and then getting that expansive move we want. I'm just going to be patient with it. I'm not going to try to uh, get into a bunch of uh, day trades. I might end up copying some equity after we dip down and take more lows and start to show bullish structure, but um I'm just going to start focusing on it for now. Um, indices push up today on um, ES. Uh, Dow is super strong today. As usual, Dow is the leader of the pack. Dow actually made a higher high right here when nothing else has. So, you know, we could look at that as SMT. I will say the Dow has been really fickle trying to play SMT because it's, you know, it's had bearish SMT on bearish SMT and everything still goes. Um, I think the, the Dow, we've talked about this, is going to be drawing up into this, and I would not be surprised. Now, unless we get a very immediate reaction here, or we've taken out this liquidity, then at that point, um, you know, if we don't start to see a shift down, I and mean, it's pretty clear that we're going to this right here. <clears throat> now, on a four hour on the Dow, um, so I've started to use the four a little bit just more for bias because I'm starting to span out and use the daily and weekly for the levels 
and the major you know, key points, and then use a four hour and the one hour is kind of like mini daily charts. Usually I've been just using the one hour and I'm still focusing on that more, but the four hour, I'm kind of just refining the daily. So here I see the most recent displacement as this right here. You can also just kind of extend that up there and really now we can extend it up here because all this to me is the same range. Now, if you look though, it did come to a discount and move back up and took the high. So it's really just bullish order flow at this point on the Dow. I think that the August highs are likely. Now we do have the FOMC tomorrow afternoon and flash PMI. Uh, either one of those could be a catalyst for major price moves. So what is this? Oh yeah, the contract expirations. Um, you know, so could be, uh, could go either way. I'm not gonna try to, to predict the news, but I, I wouldn't like those highs to get taken over here. NQ following analysis better than ES. It's moved down. It looks like we took the low here that I, we had talked about. So we'll take that eye off. So we're not watching that anymore. Cause that was what? 526.50. I think it was 528. So if we look right here, we had very nice SMT with ES right there. So if we want to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and mark this so I don't forget about it. So very light, but still SMT right there. Then this morning I took a long, I wish I would have held it a little longer, um, but took a long. Once we came under this low, I watched the one minute. We had that SMT. I was doing all this off mobile too. I wasn't even out of bed. I, I kind of slacked this morning. So I just longed as soon as we got here. Like as soon as this happened, we closed this candle. I just longed. I mean, my stop was right under these lows. It was like a, I think it was like a 26.5 stop where I was at. When I was, because I tried to do it somewhere. I was like right up in here where I longed. And then I ended up just cutting it for around 2R. It was a little less. I didn't cut it at the very top right there. It was somewhere in this candle, I remember. And I just played that just very quick in and out trade. Um, kind of wish I'd held a little longer because I, I had a feeling we were going to come take these highs right here. So we took out the sell side from this little five minute range and the buy side was up above. Now, if we look at the one hour and that was mainly based on the SMT or a 15 minute is even clearer. Um, we've now came up into this uh, order block up here. We rated these relatively equal highs and now we've pushed up, moved up again, taking that liquidity. Not... Any kind of displacement I want to see. I'm going to delete this. Sometimes I, I can't stand having the boxes on my screen anymore. I don't, I don't know why. Now, what I would like to see here is a nice displaced push under this low. Um, might actually, eh, it's lunch hour, so I might paper trade it. But I see a lot of setups in lunch hour that um, if they, they happen and I don't take them, they always play out. But we'll see. Uh, overall, I'd like to see displacement there as if we are to see lower. Now, if we don't see displacement and close under this, and maintain that push down, then I would look for higher prices. ES, um, I think these highs are a nice draw right now. And um, it goes into the bias for the week. If we're going to make a move down into this order block, we need to see that bullish move Monday and Tuesday and, and preferably put in the high of the week on Tuesday, um, which we, we have put in the high of this week on Tuesday. Uh, if we look on the four hour chart, or yeah, it was a four hour chart. There's liquidity resting up there. And we tapped into this fair value gap. But if you look, we have this fair value gap right here. That got tapped into, but not into a premium. And then on top of that, we have this order block right above. So whenever we're looking at a trying to, um, have a bearish power of three for the weekly candle. We would want to see push up first, right? Because we're in the premium of the range. We went over all this yesterday. On the premium of the range, we've got liquidity front running discount pricing, and we've got a price delivery rate very clean, right? Optimal trade entry. So the daily is pretty clear to me. Even if we were to take this high, I would still look for this, but I don't think we're going to go that high. Um, the main point that I would want to watch is this order block right here and above this high. Now, if we go over here, it was actually a one hour. Let 
Awesome. There's a breaker right there as well. We actually had talked about this breaker a little bit last week on NOS. It didn't hit NOS, it hit ES. I don't know if you guys remember that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's right here. <laughs> See, we want I wanted it to hit. I mean, it kind of dug into it there, but I wanted it to hit with this candle and recapitalize off of it, and it did not. And then it ended up giving the full fill right there before it moved out. The target met on um, NOS, as far as our stepping stone target, that initial low from Thursday of last week. ES has not yet. Um, Where's this line from? Oh, that's just the... I'm going to delete that. I know, I know what I'm looking for. But um, what is this? Oh, oh yeah. By the way, guys, I'm glad Playboy just announced this. Um, for everybody watching, there's a Black Friday sale. So um, there's 50% off on everything. Yearly memberships, if you use code BF50, um, you get 50% off. So um, go ahead and run that up. I'm glad he said that because I completely almost forgot. <laughs> Oil. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look. So reacting nicely to our point of liquidity we talked about, we actually took this. So I would look for some upside here. I'm going to go to US. Or actually, I'll just... Uh, why isn't it showing me? I have to right click. That's right. Okay, so this is a good example for bias. Um, when we're talking about our most recent displacement, we've got this push down on the daily. So let me go ahead and mark out this. I really like this volume imbalance as a draw. So the reason I'm saying that is we have this uh, nice little volume imbalance, which is a gap between those the can opening candles right there. So Whenever we take out this old low, and you want to ask yourself, I actually tweeted about this. When you're talking about daily bias, you just want to ask what, what kind of liquidity has been taken recently? Are we in a premium or a discount? What price delivery arrays are nearby? I, I try to simplify it the best I can. So here's our impulse swing. We took sell side. So now we're going to go back up. I mean, it's it's that it's as simple as that. And the thing is, I don't want to sell an idea that, oh, it's simple as that. It's always right because it's not. Right. You know, you could move into right here. Like here would be the stepping stone target would be bullish into this imbalance because that's the first at a premium. The reason I picked this because it's not an optimal trade entry and you've got an order block right there. So whenever you find multiple levels, that's somewhere where I usually will watch. So also looking at the weekly chart, what did you trade into? I was looking at this last night. On the U.S. oil chart, weekly volume imbalance. So you, you know, high, rated that daily liquidity into a weekly time, uh, volume imbalance. So now we're going to look for push a push to the upside. Now, as far as trading this, um, you could look. I mean, it seems like it's drawing pretty rapidly. You know, if I would have been watching. I would have been trying to trade something probably in this imbalance or maybe right at just the equilibrium line, but I did not want to come down that low. So overall, you know, if we want to play stepping stones, you're kind of getting close to the draw. Um, oops, not premium. So you've got this daily imbalance right here that 82.43 you're inching up on it right now that would be the close you know stepping stone so to speak and if you want you can kind of look at this like a breaker because we took this high and then we've got this candle down here now that would be a stretch I, i'm not really a big fan of using the lower down breakers but i mean you are you know it is kind of confluence with the level so I would be watching this imbalance right here for a reversal. Now, specifically, if you were to get maybe a one hour shift within that zone, that's something that you would want to maybe look to sell short. 
So we come up above this high. There's also liquidity. This is your um, buy side liquidity. They're the next thing that's drawing to on the uh, one hour. So now if you wanted to trade this, if we look during the kill zone. So like if you would have came in the market, if I was watching oil, you'd had a bullish bias. So you say, okay, well, I'm looking for buys. So I'm looking for buys during the kill zone. New York kill zone is best for oil, in my opinion. So if we're looking at that, that's this blue. And then we had the lending close. Both of these are fine. Really, it's just the New York AM session. So you're going to look. Oops. And look during this time period for an entry. Now, the, the, the framework doesn't have to happen in this time period. You can just look for the entry, oftentimes the push down. So if we look in the last session, what was set up for us during this London session? It came down, put in a low at five, and rapidly moved off of it. So we know that this right here was a liquidity rate. Price pushes up, gives us a shift in market structure. And then we can say, okay, well, what POIs do I have in a discount? Boom. So you could have said, I'm going to long here. Now where your stop placement is, that's up to you. What I've been doing, I don't know how well it works for oil. I've been doing this for indices and Forex a lot. If I'm very confident in a fair value gap, like I would do a stop right there just under the first candle in the fair value gap formation. Or if it's like many gaps, I would do it under the last candle that isn't a fair value gap or you know, doesn't have that expansion. And you could have said, okay, well, I'm going to take it to the highs. You know, that could have been a trade in itself you could, or that could have been a partial and you might take it up to the draw. Actually, dude, oil, may, you, you keep telling me to try oil. I want to start fucking trading it again. It's so clean lately. Yeah, that, that was how the, the plan of attack would have been on oil, in my opinion. And you got that push down right with the New York equity open. And another thing, too, if you use the 8.30 a.m. candle to determine, you know, where you're at in terms of the day, you know, that would be your discount pricing is in terms of the CME open. So you're under that 8.30 a.m. open. If you're bullish on the day, and you're looking for a buy. The reason a lot of people mark the 830, I don't I don't even think most people understand why they're marking it. Um, but it's to mark the CME open. And that's whenever we have the um the initial volume spike in the morning. And oftentimes, again, it's just all the the, the idea of accumulation, manipulation, distribution, or power of three, it doesn't have to be used just on weekly or daily candles. It's just the idea and the theory that we see an accumulation of orders so you'll see this and then you know if you're looking up here well you're going to see down first before you get up there so it's accumulation manipulation distribution so that's what you know you can look at that from we're talking about time and price you can look at it from you know 8 30 you can look at it from the midnight candle you can look at it on the weekly candle and use monday and tuesday as your accumulation it's just, it's like a lot of trading. The theory is applied the same. This is really nice price action though. What's up, Adeliki? What's up, Bjorn? Vibin? Sardar, what's up? What's up, Zero? Can I do gold? Yeah, sure. Gold and then GU. I got you. I didn't put gold on here. I thought I did. I need to add it back because I'm going to start trading it again. So gold I'm, I'm waiting on right now. It's almost, uh, it's definitely playing out like we thought it would. Talked about this in the private class on Sunday and then also a little bit yesterday. <clears throat> what I'm looking for is a push down into ideally this candle right here that order block but this imbalance will suffice i'm actually i need to set an alarm <coughs> <coughs> sorry excuse me 
Oh, once we come down in there, I'm going to be watching the lower time frames to try to get an entry to go long. Um, and I also might, most of all, this chart makes me want to buy some physical gold, but um, I really, uh, really like this chart. So for gold, whenever it charts this clean, I'm not like an avid gold trader at the moment. So I'm not really going to try to trade down, but I think the better setups are shorts now. Like you should wait and try to sell down into these lows. I know there's just massive imbalance that's going to make it a, a kind of a choppy way uh, down, but um, you know it's it's that's that's why I, I just want to wait on it. But if you know you you only trade gold, um, also pretty clean setups here. I mean, nice liquidity raid right at the New York beginning of New York kill zone, a 15 minute. You have that imbalance in the one hour. It's also here on the 15 minute. Push into that. And then now we got this displacement down. It's sloppy after that, though. I think that the entry was up in this area, but using a lower time frame chart. So you know, once you come up into that 15 minute imbalance, Market structure shift. This is really nice. Boom, there you go. All my lines are blue. I don't like that. So that, that's really what I see here with gold, but it's just clear that the order flow is bearish to me. Um, I, I would look for lower pricing. Again, I mean, I'm just waiting for a push down into this imbalance, into that discount pricing. I'm just going to hide this just because I've... I have had it on my chart. You guys have seen it. I've tweeted it. You heard it here first. Gold's going to the moon. <laughs> now, I, what I want to see, though, is the lower time frames shift there, and then I will look to getting some gold swings for sure. Uh, good question. So what indicator do I have that displays the kill zones? It's actually super useful. It is... Wait, where the fuck did it go? Oh, yeah, it's down here. ICT kill zones. Um... So I can, how do I like actually see it? Trading view makes it really difficult. So ICT kill zones. It's like one of the first ones, but yeah, I've never used it, but I like it a lot. It's cleaner because most of the kill zone fucking indicators, they'll be like this, like New York kills. It's like, bro, I don't want that on my screen. Yeah. So it's a good indicator for sure. I like having it down here. It's really good for back testing. Be yeah, a gold overall bearish bias. Like we talked about yesterday into this imbalance. Pound dollar, uh, nothing's changed. I got it's funny because I, I was pretty specific on my bias, and people are like, "Oh, you change your bias?" Like, oh, is this then I'm like, "No." I mean, like, first of all, if I'm wrong, I really don't mind. Um, and second of all, I'm not gonna let like a bullish morning change my mind. So um, here on GU, so I'm looking at the daily chart. My bias is bearish because I want to push down on this weekly order block and this imbalance. You've got a monthly order block down on here too. So when we start to create these levels within that monthly order block, we can go and try to refine them as much as we want and find levels inside there. Now we also have a four hour order block. I mean, there's a lot of levels down here. So that being said, um, and we're in the weekly imbalance, we've almost filled it to a T. So that being said, if I go down to a one hour, The last displacement that I see is right here. Like this is the, the main range we're trading within as far as displacement goes. So we traded down, traded back up, got a nice high resistance rate on liquidity, another displacement down. Now we've came back up. Looks like we pipped all these highs right here, kind of recapitalize this order block right here. Go to a 15 minute, it might be a little clearer. There's some equal highs there. Again, look, it's all happening during the kill zone. So pip the liquidity raid during the kill zone right there at 8 a.m. Push down. You just mark this whole little leg right here. Because you never got a push back up until then. So you could have traded off this order block. You could have traded off one of these highs. You could have traded right off equilibrium. And then just, you know, that initial daily bias is bearish. So if we're talking about targets, you can go to a 15 minute. You can target this low right here, which would have already hit. You can target this low right here. 
I think more downside as well for GU. Um, overall, drawing liquidity on a one hour, I think, is going to be this low down here. I know it's been a sloppy ride, but that's that's kind of what we want to see when we have a daily or a I'm sorry, a weekly bias that is bearish. Somebody asked, can I look at Bitcoin one hour power of three? Yeah, sure. I, like I said at the beginning, I think it's definitely I mean, the one hour um, power of three. I was kind of peeping the same thing. I don't know if this is what you were looking at. This right here. And then a push down into that low. And then, you know, maybe pushing up into these highs. Or, I mean, the overall target that I wanted to see was 18.7 for Bitcoin. Before and more downside. But the only problem with me with Bitcoin right now. I'm just not super, super confident in it. Like I, I just, it doesn't agree with a lot of things I'm looking at. Ethereum is just all over the place. So whenever I see stuff like that, me personally, and, and this, you know, is different per person. I just kind of chill, you know, and, and it could, like, it looks decent here. I see what you see. You've taken this low out. So we've taken that, now push back up, not really coming into the range much. It's, I mean, it is, but it's not wanting to hold there. So really what I would watch if I were one to want to see this, I would want to see very bullish price action from this fair value gap. So you'd want to see price come back down into this area and on one of your entry time frames, give you your entry model. So... The classic market structure shift. We just want to see price showing desire to move away from that very rapidly. Because um, if it doesn't, you know, then uh, you know, that, that's not good for the power of three idea. Now, I mean, it looks good in the terms we took the low and immediately came up. The only problem is one thing with um, when we take a low like this, if I'm looking for a general reversal. So if I look for a trade, for instance, like if I'm just looking for a trade, I'll just look for any swing high to be taken. And then I'll look for a premium of that impulse move that took us down. But if I want to see a reversal, you know, a nice reversal, I we took the high right here. You know, this was the last high that we had before the liquidity rate, you know, because this high would be something to frame that retracement play. But if we're looking for a reversal, I want to see that high taken. And we did take it, but we're not really holding above it. You can see that we're immediately wanting to move away from it. Now, again, we're, it's still too early to really call that, you know, but as of right now, I don't really like that reaction. But if we just kind of mosey on into this fair value gap and then expand, then that would be good for bulls for sure. So overall for Bitcoin, if you want to see that power of three narrative is a push down here. And then rock it up, or I mean, or you could just move up from here. You know, that would be ideal as well. But um, there's just I'm just kind of sitting on the sidelines with it. Like I said earlier in the stream, I don't know if you're in here, but I we did really good with crypto um, for like two weeks leading up into the FTX scandal, and then I've got stopped out on two trades today, and I'm kind of just chilling on it right now. So, um, mm -hmm. the SBF hearing. Yeah. I don't think there is. Either. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that they might do something, but I don't think like the dude who started Tornado Cash, which is like literally just a Bitcoin tumbler. He's in fucking prison. And then you have like fucking SBF, Do Kwan, all these people. Because I was talking to somebody that's like, well, yeah, but Do Kwan's not in the US. I'm like, I'm just going to like let you know something like if they wanted him he would be gotten unless he's in russia or china like you're done yeah it's possible fuck i'd rather go to jail well i think the rumors were that he was still in singapore and he was paying off all the cops because apparently he's yeah but i don't know yeah exactly dude's fucking up like 100 mil probably But 
Somebody asked, have I noticed any change in price action during November and December? I have experienced the euro dollar not being that clean for a couple of weeks now. To be honest, I think the euro dollar is cleaner recently than it has been in a long time. Um, oh, they all are. Literally, fucking England, euro. Bro, I've gotten hit up by so many fucking crypto. I just got an email from like some crypto copy trading exchange. Like it's like, bro, like it's just I'm not doing that shit. I'm not. It's like, yeah, let's go ahead and sign everybody up for a rug pull so I can get a fucking commission fee. I've never understood that. Like all the people that like they just push their commission fees and shit. It's like, bro, like if you want to monetize your platform, just fucking monetize it. Don't put people in harm's way. Like you're trying to do that because you are scared to monetize like you're gonna oh well, yeah let's just put everybody on a fucking rug pull exchange that has no kyc it's like yeah that makes sense got you <clears throat> yeah no that I, I overall that's what i think that this is would be nice to have this, but I think that this like red is going to take a while if this is the thing, like you have it drawn. But yeah, I, I think overall Bitcoin is getting that point where we want to bid it. But just as far as that, like day trading it right now, I think that this range, like, yeah, like I, I see the same thing. Like even on the daily, if you just draw like this and accumulation and then you know, manipulation and then like a push back up something crazy. Like I would like to see that. I think that's what's going to happen just because all of the, everybody's so like, oh dude, crypto's going to fucking 10K, 9K. And I think that it, it probably will at some point, but mm -hmm. yep, that's, that's literally why, I, that's why I said at the beginning, I was like, that's why I'm like, like the price action on Ethereum is just so like it's whenever things get like this is whenever I'm just like, OK, I'm going to sit out for a little bit because overall I want higher at some point. But these will equal lows, not even like the the sell side. I mean, that that too. I want to move this, change my new thing. But um, like, fuck, bro. That, like, how is that not going to get cleared? And then this doesn't even get cleared like these. It's just engineering such so much uh, liquidity that it's just manipulated right now. I'm going to be sad if, if we got stopped on those shorts just because I used the different stop. Because I used the stop of the fair value gap candle. It wouldn't have hit if I would have used my normal stop. But um, we'll see. <laughs> that will be uh, that will be sad. But I don't really care too, too much. Because I've been using it with Forex and indices. I just haven't used it with crypto. But I should have known like anything when you, anytime I try to get too precise on crypto, like on the lower time frames, I start taking like, you know, you can still be very profitable, but you start taking those little unnecessary, like stupid losses. But I was I used the one hour on this one, but it still still clapped me. Because the way I looked at it, I was like, OK, well, if it goes up higher than that, you know, on the one hour, I, w I wasn't looking on the 15 minute, but I was like, it's going to go for the high. But on the 15 minute, I can kind of see, you know, oh, there's a liquidity right there. It could have taken. So that was kind of my mistake on that. I have a feeling it's going to go down and take the lows, but we'll see. That would be go along with the uh, overall weekly bias I have for equities, not necessarily Ethereum specifically, but. Holy shit, CRV went crazy. I didn't even realize this. See, this looks good. This looks like, but I, but then it's like, this is the thing with crypto. Yeah, this looks good, but then it's like, okay, then you have Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin's influenced by indices. It's just like, whenever crypto is like in that mode, like I'm glad, because I almost didn't get active last time whenever crypto is going. And that's when you have to get active. But then when it's like, when it's not, it's just such a waste of fucking time. Yeah, I think it's it's good to trade when it's good to trade. 
but other than that, it's literally a waste of time and energy and risk. That's why I, I try to be good at moving in between, uh, Oh, in between asset classes and understanding where the best setups are. Um, how do I use market maker models or power of three to enter trades? Same thing as everything else. Like literally, um, it's just a framework. So like you use your entry model based off of the market maker model or based off the power of three and um for pure oh you found it that was you asked okay ict kill zones by enrico amato is what it is Ivan said he's shortened at 1650 and long at 1085. NFA, NFA. <laughs> I think it's going to go lower. If, if it does start coming down, I think it'll go to these lows at 1071. Really? What do you mean? That statement could go multiple ways. Said they're beating off the cop. Oh, they said they're beating off the cop. I was like, Who's beating him up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I was just fucking with you. Okay. <laughs> I watch this shit. Hey, to be fair, though, those are some good cops for not killing them. Because, like, I feel like anywhere else, the cop would just fucking pull out the strap and start shooting the fuck out of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, if that was a person, they'd shoot you, much less a cop. That's how cops should be, though, I feel like. If, you, if you're a cop, like, you should try to, like, resort to that as a last, uh, you know, last resort. But at the same time, you know, whenever people are like grown ass people, like, like, hell, I know if I'm out and I have a strap on me and somebody starts trying to beat me up, like, I'm going to shoot them. I'm not going to sit there and fight you. Like, sorry. Yeah. So it's like, you know, whenever they, because, you know, grown ass people, bro, like, you know, if you're out here trying to fight people and trying to hurt people, like, you know, and you get shot, it's kind of like, yeah, it's on you. There's a strategy I've been um, kind of messing with. I want to use it more. I, I want to back test it. Like it's been a while since I really back tested some shit, but and it worked today very nicely. So it's kind of like this, like it's it's almost like an A B C D pattern, but they're not. We were talking about a little bit the other day or yesterday. Um, they're not always like A B C Ds. Like I don't think this is actually an A B C D. It doesn't. Actually, yeah, it would be right there. So they're A B C Ds. They're like lick raids in the kill zone. On a, on a 15 minute only. So what I've noticed is like if you have this push, you have a push down, push up, and then that second push down. So you can target this and they don't always provide the best risk rewards. So I have to do some tweaking with it, but like, you know, the target would be this 
um, it's high. And then if you if it goes with daily bias, maybe try to target um, higher, like the the beginning of the push, you know, or, or just use other targeting methods, you know. So, for instance, after you get that initial lick raid, you go to a one minute. And you just wait for, I mean, it's the same as anything else as far as entries go. You just wait for that shift, that push, and then boom, like right there you're in. So it would have been like, literally, so you could even just market it right there if you wanted to. But if you want to wait for the fair value gap, boom, right there. Stopped under there. And it's, they're usually decent R, bro. And it's just so, and it doesn't even matter about daily bias. Like it does not. I will be honest, like it, it's literally just looking for that ABCD pattern. And it, on Forex, not on a crypto or anything, but on Forex. Specifically, you're a dollar. Let's go back, we'll look and see if I can find another one. Well, here, here, yeah, here is this one. And it plays in a lot of times with other TB or T, uh, TA too. So it's a little different. Like it's not always as clean, you know? It's so like here he pushed up during the kill zone retrace and then came up and took that high and when we don't close over that 15 minute candle and it's kind of like that liquidity raid model same thing just a shift you could have traded here but the order block was very clean so I just back test with that so it's like it's a pretty good model and it's like four r four r yesterday and four r today i mean if you do it right and you can get that two or three times a week you know that could be a very good strategy Sorry, I was typing on text. I, I really, I'm going to test the strategy more. I'm going to probably try to buckle down maybe either tonight or tomorrow, or I'll probably just use my girlfriend's laptop whenever I'm on Thanksgiving break. Um, Because her aunt and her talk for like, fuck. Dude, I swear, do you guys know anybody, like family or anything? Like, like it's like, like it's like the motherfucking Olympics of talking or some shit. Like, I mean, maybe I'm just a dick, but like sometimes like you'll go to somewhere and it's like they will talk for like, eight hours, 10 hours. And it's not, I, I get it. If you haven't seen something in a long time, I get it. And I'm not trying to be a dick, but like, sometimes I'm like, holy fuck. Like, I don't even know how people do that shit. I'm like amazed. This is a, it's a clean strike. So let's just back test a little bit. There was yesterday's trade. And it has to be during New York or London kill zone. Well, I guess that I'm just saying that's what I would look for. That's where I would look for anything. So let's see. Did this close above that? Or not close, but pull above that? I don't think we got it. They got it set up here, maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't have seen. There's not really a setup here this day. So no day, no setup last Friday. And that's what uh, these really make back testing nice. This because it's just like it helps you. You don't have to look around where the time is. Well, here's one. Actually, no, it didn't close. Or I mean, it did close. 
I'm trying to figure out the best way to use it to make it as mechanical as possible. So it, it closed there. It seems like it would have given an entry there, even if um, you already play it. She came under the low. And you got that pick there. Um, I guess you would just, this would be one I'd probably just trade at a discount, like it's at the equilibrium, I should say. Stop loss there. And then the target would be the B, so it would be like A, B, C, D, so that. I swear it's a pretty solid strategy. It really, like, I've, I was messing with it just like I was like starting to see harmonics everywhere, and then I was like, "Damn, like, it's it's super clean. Like, like it happens a lot." Because I started back test on, uh, I can't remember. What, I think it was pound dollar or dollar cad. Oh, I didn't hit it. Let's see. Did it hit it? I might have later in the day. This would have been one of those nail biters. But yeah, there you go. Nope. So, I mean, it would have been an annoying play to be in, but, you know. And, like, the thing I like about it, because I'm really trying to get a strategy where it's mainly full TPs, like not partials, just take the profit at one point. Because I know that if I can get a strategy like that on my funded and I just – and I would risk one R. If I could hit five R and just not trim, like, god damn, that would be a fucking blessing. So there's another trade. So it's three for three right now. Didn't give a trade one day. So here you would go to, well, this would actually, this would be, I guess this is kind of an outlier because it didn't, it did close under the candle. So, you know, this might be something added into the strategy, but I was focusing on no closes, trying to make it as mechanical as possible. So over here, This would have been another one where it closed under it. It looks like it took it out because you'd have had this would have been a, a kind of a fickle one because you don't get down. Here would have been your B point. But you did close under it, but it did hit it. So you'd have had it push down. So anywhere under this, if you're using candle closes and kind of using a discretionary method. You would have used it's right here. An entry would have been just at a discount. So probably the fair value or the order block because the fair value gaps in both. So you would have said this right here. Oh, if the, if the broker widens spreads on you, you are in a world of pain, but. Boom, and you're high right there. It's 2.8 R on that one. But, I mean, it's a kind of discretionary thing because you have to know what you're looking for is in terms of that, you know, um, that liquidity. It, it's really just a liquidity rate. It's like a push and then a sweep of that initial push. So it's kind of like trying to play, the, I guess, the Judas swing of that, um, that session a lot of the times. Let's go back another day. Okay, again, pushed up, pushed up again. Maybe the way to do it is to just play the raid or just look for a reversal. You know, here would have been your... You to visualize what I'm seeing. Like I said, that they're not always the perfect ABCD patterns by harmonic terms, but it's just that I just... That's what my brain sees, so I was kind of trying to... Um, explain it, so to speak. So here, structure shift, and this is being aggressive the way that I mark structure out. Um, if that's the only really structure you had, and then that you would have been able to use either this fair value gap or the order block. So you would have just marked this. The order block is an optimal trade entry. 
So done that right there. Now this one would be a little different because you you know the risk to reward wouldn't be as good if you use the raid high. It's only 1.7. So what I would have done is probably just use the most recent swing high. And again, it's six to one right there. So then let's go back to another session. And also, I haven't gone back and added if there's news drivers in these sessions because I like to do that if I'm testing. So do, do. This didn't really give anything. I mean, you could try to say that that was ABCD, but I wouldn't look for that. <laughs> so nothing on that day. So it's a dry day. Nothing on this day either. In New York, I'm just looking at New York. Okay, nothing there, obviously, as far as that strategy goes. So, again, you push down, come down under there. You did close a candle. It seems like all of them are candle closes, so maybe that needs to be edited out. Just look for that initial you know, push and then a rate of that lower high that was made. And notice I'm doing this no daily bias, like, this isn't anything to do with. It's literally, I'm trying to come up with some kind of like machine learnable strategy. So you push right here. First, price delivery rate at a um, discount would really be this whole order block, which was this candle right here, the body of that one. So, oops, wrong tool. Strike right there. What was the B point again? It was right here. Five R, super clean. I mean, it's just maybe onto something. Giving out some free game live. <laughs> um, so let's go back another session. So here, okay. This is this one. I can't really say I would have taken. Actually, well, to be honest, during the London session. Because you had something there, but I, I, I'm not going to worry about them trying to keep it focused. I'm going to push down here and I push down there. I mean, this is another one where it's kind of choppy. Find out a way to maybe make this more mechanical or more you know, if then. Maybe sometimes using a five minute. You're basically just using a liquidity rate of the, the, you know, the initial push down in the morning and that gets rated. So it's really just playing the liquidity rate in the morning uh, oftentimes. But it's a, trying to make it into a machine learnable way. So then the target would be this high. This one you would have got messed or left behind on. I mean, if you use this uh, order block, you would have got tagged in. I'm not order block, I'm sorry, fair value gap, but it didn't come to a discount. So I would have probably got left on that one. So it'd be one that was left. If depending on how you entered it, you might have got in. If you did enter on that fair value gap, would have been nice 2.5 R, but definitely lower than usual for this strategy as far as terms of risk to reward. This would have probably been a loss if you used candle closes because if you look here, had that push up, down, up. So you're to look for a short end of this low. And you would have got the entry model for sure, which is right there. You know, or if you use the optimal trade entry in the order block, regardless, it would have been a loss. If you're taking talking about taking full TPs, which is okay, it's like the first loss this system's given. It would have been a sad loss too, because you'd have been up like three R. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll probably go back and document all this. Usually when I back test, I kind of just do it like this. Um, I haven't back tested a, a strategy like this in a minute, though. So there's no setup here. Nothing really here either. Here you'd add a nice one. Push up, push up. Let's see what the entry would have looked like. If you even got one. So it bottoms out at all. So I would have said this would be your entry. Now, let's see how it goes. You could try to use a stop loss right here. Or maybe at the end of all these fair value gap candles. Like right there would have been a good stop maybe. If it even provides good enough risk to reward. And then the target would have been... here did it tag you in no I never tagged you in so that would have been a mistrade I'll leave that there just for documentation later this would have been one but it would have taken uh, all damn day see that big push down push up push down I wouldn't have really taken anything until this swing. So this fair value gap. You didn't even come back down. Actually, you could have extended it right there. Still didn't come down though. Yeah, you already got a mistrade there too. Anyways, I'll do this another day. We've been back testing for a little bit now, but. I like the idea of the strategy just because I think it's really simple. Let me ask, when entering a trade, how do you determine using a fair value gap versus an order block? Um, daily bias or higher time from structure? So if you're talking about for entry, we actually just literally went over this in the uh, private class on Sunday where the class was called what order block or fair value gap to use. Um, basic overview you it's going to be different for everybody depending on your trading plan and we went over how to determine that in the class i'll be posting up a code later tonight um where you can get uh what is this sorry i got another email where you guys can get a um a half off on a year of play bit if you decide to do something like that you could use it with my code and and support me that'd be dope <laughs> that's the only code you'll ever see me use as far as affiliate stuff for trading it, i would never i just don't i don't i think it's crazy how people put use the codes to get people to get on these exchanges it's like you know ftx rug pulled and you don't think that uh oh you're a private member yeah yeah so you go go ahead and watch the um the class you got access to it it's in the lessons with the rest of the classes But yeah, like FTX gets rug pulled and people don't think that like fucking Prime XBT or Bing X or something is like, bro, I don't know.
Well, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here. Kind of a little back testing session. Nothing super, super exciting today. Um, tomorrow will be the last stream of the week because we have the holiday here in the States. Uh, Carl Goss asked for a gold update. It is earlier in the video. We went over gold pretty intensively. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys know how to get at me. Um, yeah, and I'll post that uh, that code up later on for Playbits Black Friday deal if you guys want to um, capitalize off that because it's going to be it's it's literally the biggest deal that Playbits ever done. So it's half off. Anyways, I will see you guys later. And if you got any questions, hit me up. Peace.